Acroasis Octawa, or Video 8, from Chapter 3, pages 23 to 24. Today we'll be talking about the vocative case and the imperative mood. First, a little Lectio et Translatio, or Read and Translate. Now, take a look at the picture and see and the words underneath and see if you can figure out what this Latin phrase means. Soli feminae tolite manus. Soli feminae tolite manus. Here's a hint. Do you get it now? Great. Now, here is the actual clip from the song. Now let's continue on. Recognitio, or let's review. We learned that the vocative is the case for direct address, which normally has the same ending as the nominative case. We use it whenever we're addressing someone by their title or by their name or a group of people by a title or, or name. So, for example, Wilson, come here. Wilson here is the vocative. In the response, you rang sir. Sir is the vocative because we're referring now to a title rather than a name. Another example, Igor, bring me my monster. Igor here is our vocative again, because we are talking to Igor. And Igor, when he responds with, yes, master. Master is your vocative, because master is the address that Igor is using to talk to his master. Discate. We have an exception in Latin, which only occurs in the second declension for vocative which, of course, we're learning right now. The way you figure out this exception is by looking at the nominative singular form. So let's take a look at some examples. If the word ends in I-U-S, for example, Julius or Julius, the vocative ending is I, for example, Yuli. If it ends in only U-S, like Brutus, the vocative ending is E, for example, brute. This is, of course, where Shakespeare worked on his famous quote, et tu brute, which is, and you, Brutus. Here he uses correctly the vocative ending of Brutus. So, very easy. Scribite omnes, the imperative. These are commands issued directly. So when I am talking to someone and I want them to do something and I'm not being particularly polite about it. The commands are usually seen with the vocative case, which is our direct address. And remember, it's important that this is a verb, not a noun. So you cannot make a noun imperative, nor can you make a verb vocative. So let's take a look at the magic formula for creating the imperative. For right now, we're going to take the second principal part, which is the infinitive, which is the word that ends in RE, the second form of your verb. Now, take off the RE, and you have your singular. An example is amare. Take off the RE, and you're left with ama, which means love, or commanding someone to love, that is. Another example, pugno, pugnare. Take off the RE, and you have pugna, fight. So if you're at your sporting events, you can say pugna or pugnate to your team to cheer them on. Now, when we want to make it plural, you take the second principal part and you take off the RE again or use the singular form. Then you add TE and this is the plural. So pugnare, take off the RE, that's our singular, remember, of the imperative. Then we add TE to make it plural, so pugnate. So that's when I want to tell many people to fight. If I want to tell many people to love, I'm going to take amare, take off the RE, add TE, and I have amate. Some further examples that we'll probably be using in class. Audi, audite, sede, sedete, vide, videte, surge, surgite. Now, when you use this with the vocative, all it does is come before or after, and it complements who specifically you're talking to. So, for example, if I'm ordering my dog to sit, I would say, Puella, 
sede, because if my dog is a girl. So puelai sedete would be if I had more than one with me. Now, of course, you can substitute this with anything else if you had, your dog has a particular name or if you're telling your cat to sit. Good luck with that. Um, or perhaps you want to tell your brother or your sister or your friends, whatever you are choosing to command, you substitute, of course, the appropriate vocative word to particularly target that audience. Now, of course, what about when you want somebody to not do something? And this, of course, is frequent if you have parents. They always are telling you not to do things. In fact, we teachers often tell you not to do things. But now you have the power to not to tell people not to do things. Now, to negatively command someone in Latin, telling them don't do something, we use the word noli and nolite, plus the second principal part. Now, these are two words that work together. So, to form a singular command, we're going to use noli. And then we'll use the second principal part of the verb, keeping the RE. We're not taking anything off, because technically the imperative is noli. That's the word that means don't. And the second principal part is just explaining what we don't want to be done. So, an example, noli dormire, don't sleep. When we want to make it plural, instead of noli, we're going to use nolite, and the second principal part again. So, remember, the imperative is actually nolite in this phrase, and the second principal part is just saying what we don't want to happen. So, nolite dormire. You all, all of you, don't sleep. So that concludes this presentation. I hope you have feel refreshed on the imperative mood and have a clear understanding of the vocative case with its second declension exceptions. Until next time, wale te omnes.